everyone, it's Autumn. Today I wanted to do a really fun video in collaboration with Amy from Saver Salvage Scent. Hi cats and kittens, it's Amy from Saver Salvage Scent. If you haven't already checked out her video, I do suggest you go check it out. She is one of my favorite YouTubers right now. She does amazing videos talking about fragrance, but not only that, she doesn't just pick up a fragrance and tell you the notes like a lot of fragrance reviewers out there do. She tells you the story behind the house and the nose of the perfume and she really paints a picture um, around the fragrance itself. So a lot of the times, at least for me, I am a sucker for a story behind a fragrance and I will buy stuff blindly if it has a good story. So I think this year I've bought in quite a few, is bought in a word? I don't believe so, but I have bought quite a few perfumes blindly just because I've been watching her channel because it's, she's just so interesting to watch. So I do highly suggest you go over there and you check her out. Um, she gives me um, artsy librarian vibes. She's a super kind person um, and I don't know, I can't really say enough about her. I think she's great. So I did want to go ahead and um, point you over there. I'll have some visuals and things like that here on the screen as well. So you know exactly who I'm talking about throughout the video. So Amy and I actually became friends because I could not pronounce Lair Blue. Um, and I was looking for um, just a little snippet of somebody else reviewing it in a video to where I could patch it into my video because I knew I wasn't saying it right. So I did that with her video and luckily she wasn't too offended and we became fast friends. And then I find out that she lives only 35 miles away from me, which we haven't met in person yet, but I think that we will really soon, as soon as you know everybody's vaccinated and everything is great. So I'm super excited for that. But I did wanna go ahead and hop into what today's video is all about. So I know that this idea I think might be out there on the internet somewhere. I cannot find it though. And for some reason in my head, I feel like I've watched a similar video to this. So if you can find the video, please let me know in the comment below so that I can give proper credit. However, I also wanna make this into a challenge. Amy and I have discussed it and she thought it would be really fun to make this into a challenge for other people to do. So if you are in the fragrance community or you just wanna do this with a friend and film it, please do so. And I will kind of just tell you how we did it. So Amy and I sent each other, I believe we ended up sending 14 cents to each other and we have no idea who the house is or what is in them and pretty much, I'll show you an envelope here. I've made notes on some of the envelopes as I tested them out, but they were numbered and then so is the fragrance here. Um, I was really lazy and um, sprayed it while it was still on the envelope. Um, so I wouldn't lose them. Some of them fell off though. But anyway, <laughs> um, inside the envelope, which I have not opened yet, is the information about the fragrance. So I made notes myself about each fragrance. As you can see, I have pretty extensive notes here about what I smelled. So a lot of people smell different things when they smell fragrances, and I may be smelling things that are not even in the fragrances, um, which that is part of the fun of this. And I'll go ahead and show you an example of a card that I made um, to kind of show Amy ahead of time an example of a card. And it pretty much just lists the name of the perfume, the house, um, about how much it cost. Because one of the things is, do you think it is a higher end perfume or a cheapie? Um, is it unisex? Also the nose of the perfume, just for general information, I did not expect, um, her to guess the noses of any of the perfumes <laughs> or for anybody to do that really. And then also all the notes. And then at the bottom, I put a little asterisk with uh, my personal experience with the perfume or my thoughts with the perfume, or just like a fun little tidbit about the perfume, like fun fact, you know, whatever. I've been testing these out for a little bit over two weeks, I believe now at this point. Um, and I did wear them on my skin. Some of them I enjoyed more than others. In which that's okay, we're not um, gonna be offended if 
somebody didn't like our perfume. And I do have test strips here to spray them on paper for the video because obviously I can't spray them all on myself now. All right, so I have fragrance number one prepped. I've got the envelope and my notes and we're gonna go ahead and spray it and I will go over what I wrote down for it. So I wrote down on here and I actually sent some text messages throughout this whole process to Amy telling her what my first impressions are. All right, so here's what I wrote down on my description here. I put lemon or limoncello because it has kind of like, it's lemon, but it's kind of got that sweet sort of like creamy lemon. So that's why I put down limoncello. And then um, I'll just read out my whole description here. Super sweet, like a lemon head candy with a hint of mint also has a green note in it. I would describe it as if Hall's vitamin C cough drops and a lemon head had a baby. I couldn't decide if it was mint or eucalyptus because I think after I smelled it for a while, I wasn't sure if I was smelling mint or eucalyptus just because it had that sort of effervescence to it. And then I wrote down medicinal slash spa-like. And then I put it's like when you call off school with a cold and end up on mama's couch eating lemon sherbet while she rubs Vicks VapoRub on your chest. Um, I know that's very <laughs> sort of descriptive, but that's what I get from this. So, and that's what I get on here. On the skin though, I will say, so on here, I need to stop sniffing it or my nose is gonna go nuts. On here, it smells more lemon when you wear it on the skin that um, sort of mint or eucalyptus comes through. So let's see what is in the envelope. Oh, it's typed up. I like hand wrote mine. Um, so number one is Anik Gutal, Nuit Itul, I don't know. Why did she give me stuff I, I don't know how to pronounce? I'm gonna have to like patch her in on all of these pronouncing these. So it's a woody aromatic fragrance for women and men. It was launched in 2012. It was created by Isabel Doyen and Camille Gutel. So mint, citron, and orange. Middle notes, pine tree and fir. Base notes are immortelle, angelica, and tonka bean, which maybe that creaminess in it that I thought made the lemon a limoncello is the tonka bean in there. All right, so I said sherbet, and Vicks Vapor Rub on Mama's couch, and this is their description of it. To walk for hours at night in a nature left in a state of wilderness, to listen to the weeds getting crushed and fir cones cracking under one's feet, to collect branches of conifers, to break them and smell the resinous vapors at the tip of one's fingers, then to lie down on the ground in the moonlight as if you were all alone in the world. Okay, well that, Mama's couch, you know, whatever. I'm guessing, actually I'm hoping that it's not too expensive because I think it's a nice pick-me-up um, if you're not feeling well and I think it's because it reminds me of the whole Vicks Vapor Rub thing. Okay, um, you can get it on a small bottle on FragranceNet for 80. So, so I would say it's about mid-range. It's, like, it's not a cheapie, but it's not super expensive. Oh, also, she did a rating scheme for ones. Actually, let me look at her rating scheme so I can. I'm like all over the place. So she did. Yeah, so she did a rating scheme where she said obsessed, love, like, slash interesting, good reference, not for me, hate. I would say this is a. Um. I think this might be this might be a love in comparison to the others and we'll get to that um, I also wanted to put out there I guess now that we're already into it she and I have completely different fragrance tastes so I've done a video previously talking about how much I hate powder scents and that is something that she loves and I feel like almost all scents turn a little bit powdery or creamy on my skin once they hit my skin. I think it's just the way um, my pH is. 
I said pH weird, but I think that's just the way my pH is. So I'm very sensitive to any sort of like powdery sense at all. But I told her when we did this experiment that she can send me whatever, whether I would like it or hate it. I just actually just wanted to have like a fun little experiment. So Amy's thoughts on number one, she said, I love a winter time or winter holiday scent that is out of the box. The scent called Starry Night in French smells like taking a walk in the woods on a cold night to me. I love the mint, pine, tonka, aromatic thing that feels cold. All right, so let's go on to number two. Okay, I'm already remembering this one. Okay, so this definitely has neroli in it and citrus. Um, and it's slightly woody. It actually at first reminded me of 4711, but it was less sharp and cologne-like. If you've smelled 4711, you know what I'm talking about. Um, and so I wrote down light, Reminds me of 4711, but less cologne-like, like I just said. Um, it has citrus, neroli, floral. And so then the more I got to smelling it, the more it reminded me of Banana Republic neroli woods. Um, I would say this is very unisex. Um, which the first one I felt was unisex as well, by the way. I'm all over the place, I'm sorry. Um, but I feel like this is unisex. And um, it's very fresh. And I would wear this in like, this is a, this would be a perfect like summer scent for me. So I'm gonna go ahead and open this up and see what it is. Okay, it's John Barbados, or is it Barbados or Varvitos, Varvitos? artisan um, and it's made for men and top notes clementine tangerine marjoram and thyme then middle notes are orange blossom ginger lavender jasmine and then base notes are musk woodsy notes and amber so this has no neroli in it but I definitely I definitely smell neroli all right so Amy's thoughts for number two was I wanted so badly to hate this brand and this fragrance specifically because a certain obnoxious YouTuber loves it, but they're this open box slash bottle set discounted at $10 at TJ Maxx and I loved it. Then I read all about Varvatos, or I don't know how to pronounce that, who works in Detroit, a favorite underdog city, and that made me love it more. I love RNG plus woody things, not complex, but it does it for me on the right hot day. Yep, it's a men's fragrance, whatever. And that's what I think too, it's perfect for a hot day. Um, but this to me smells like Neroli Woods. I even took my um, Banana Republic Neroli Woods and sprayed them side by side and they smelled so similar. All right, so number three here um, let's go ahead and get it sprayed. All right, so on this one I wrote cloying at first. Dry down smelled like vinyl or rubber. And I put leather but floral. And kind of ambery with anise maybe. Yeah. There's something in it that gives me that feeling in the back of my like nose and throat that just makes me want to like you know but I definitely get some vinyl or rubber Okay, I'm just gonna open it because that one was perplexing to me. It was a really weird combination. Marshall Field Signature Oriental. 
Um, and it says, spritz yourself into a floral fantasy with the warm, comforting aroma of Marshall Field Signature Oriental. Um, full of exotic seduction and intrigue, the scent can lure anyone into your grasp. Okay, it says uh, champagne. Okay, I'm not finding the actual notes. Okay, here we go. Night jasmine, woody touches, champagne. I think it's the night jasmine that I just don't like. And a lot of perfumes that have like uh, a heavy amount of jasmine or orchid, I don't like. Yeah, this was not for me. So what she wrote about it was, now that I am better learning what you like, I doubt you will like this one. <laughs> she is correct. To me, it's a wonderful traditional oriental scent, which is her favorite group, but with a little modern sparkling quality added. No one, I mean, no one talks about it. I think it is out of commission. This weird perfume site called Tiger Lily opened last year. There were amazing deals, including this thing for $10, and then they closed weeks later and no one will answer the former email address. I'm sure they are stealing my identity now, but I smell great. Yeah, something in this to me smells like a tire. I, yeah, I, I don't like that one. And usually I like leather, but I think it's the, the floral mixed with the, it, to me it smells rubbery. So did not enjoy that one and she was correct. <laughs> mm, okay, so this one to me definitely smells masculine, but it has a soft sort of like powdery, creamy dry down. And so on first spray, it smelled like lemon and pine needles, the powdery dry down. It reminds me of my grandfather's cologne. Yeah, so that's just pretty much everything I wrote from it and that's spot on on here. Um, but immediately it hits you with like that sort of pine smell when you first spray it and then that goes away. And then it's just like soft and woody So at first it's like pine and lemon and then that goes away and then it's soft and woody. So I'm curious to see what it is. Library of Flowers by Arboretum. It's an oriental floral fragrance for women. Definitely smells masculine to me. Um, was launched in 2013. It's cardamom, ylang ylang, amber. So it only gives you three notes there. Um, and I guess the soft creaminess, yeah, it's so weird how our nose, and it's just upon first spray, you, you get like that pine and then it's gone, but, hmm. So I liked this one and it smells like what my grandfather wore to church. So let's see what Amy has to say about that one. So for me, I actually really like that one. If I had to stick it in a category, it would go in, um, I guess it would go in my loves, I guess compared to the other ones. Um, and she put, you said you were interested in experiencing more green scents. While I love um, more traditional green perfumes, this is a favorite because it's unique with stemmy or leafy effect combined with cardamom and amber. This might have a creamy feel and thus I'm not sure you will like it or not. So yeah, she is correct. And a bit to me, it's like a masculine creamy, which I'm surprised that it's marketed towards women, but that's the cool thing about smelling blindly because marketing is just marketing. Um, and so let's look it up. And this is a very affordable fragrance. Um, I see it going different places for around $40, so that's not bad at all. All right, so let's jump to fragrance number five. So I'm like spraying fragrance directly into my water bottle. Um, okay. Hmm. All right. So... I wrote down, it starts off fruity and boozy, cherry, vanilla, woody notes, dry down is almond and creamy. 
I would say, I would say this is unisex. I could say that, I mean, anything can be worn by man or a woman, but I, I would say that, I don't know, maybe fe feminine or unisex. Very fruity. Okay. So that's one that I think is interesting, but I don't see myself um, purchasing that. So I would say a good reference, um, or I guess like interesting. I'll say like interesting because it is interesting. I don't hate it, but I don't think I would wear this. So let's see what it is. Well, she gave me quite the synopsis here. So it looks, I can never pronounce stuff. All right, Chopard Happy Spirit, Amira D'Amour. Did I say that right? Um, it's okay, so it's an oriental fragrance for women. So top note is pink pepper, and then jasmine, orange blossom, honey, and tonka bean. I've been wrong on like all of these as far as scents go. Um, <laughs> let's see what Amy has to say about it. So she says she loves this house and their bottle designs. Um, designed to capture the attention of the Middle East market. Um, so she picks up on strong, smokier, less sweet. Um, okay, this is less sweet than her others from this house, which I think that's a pretty sweet scent. Um, so she said, maybe not a favorite, but she wondered what I thought. I, I think it's interesting, but it doesn't really smell like... To me, I get like cherry and almond. All right, here we are on to number six. Oh, I missed it completely. Sprayed myself. Okay. Okay. This one is the one that I had accidentally thought that possibly she had sent me Fun Fair Evening, um, which I own. But then I compared the two next to each other, and Fun Fair Evening has a much stronger anise scent to it. And so if Fun Fair Evening. If you own that or if you've tried it and it's got a little too much anise and it's a little too strong, this to me smells like a softer version of that. It's a soft floral anise sort of scent. Um, it's nice. Again, it's not something I would wear. Um, so let's see what she has to say about it and what it is. Okay, so this has plum leaf accord, pink grapefruit bergamot, osmanthus, jasmine, and neroli, myrrh, vetiver, and tonka. So no anise at all. Um, and this is Clinique Aromatics and Black. I own this. I own this. It's nice. Again, it's not something I would wear. It's one that I bought one of my previous hauls and I have it sitting over there and still haven't tried it out. I'm texting Amy right now. So let's see what she has to say about it. So we already know what I think about it, um, that I own it. I read the notes online thinking that I would love everything in it and then never wore it. But to me, it, it's a much softer version of that. So she put on here, I love the original, which inspired this flanker. One of my first Oriental spicy loves. I adore this flanker too. And it used to be cheap. Not sure anymore. Most fragrance weirdos talk about the white slash sister perfume, which I also own. And I think that one was like a super white floral. Um, but she's like, I love the black. It's rich without being fully gourmand. Also, the bottle is drop dead gorgeous. When I used to be on the hunt, this was a good one to wear. So, um, to me, so here's the thing. 
to me when I spray the black one I expect something in a black bottle to kind of have like a little oomph to it and that to me is like a nice soft sort of scent um it doesn't really do a whole lot But yeah, it does remind me a lot of Fun Fair Evening, um, just a softer version. So let's go ahead and hop on to number seven. Okay, number seven I actually like. It is a soft green floral, perfect for spring is what I wrote. Possible gardenia or honeysuckle but the green notes are more dominant. Um, almost has a dewy quality, that's what I wrote. I mean, this is really nice. Um, and I think I remember telling her that it reminded me a lot of Clinique Calyx. Is it pronounced Calyx, Calyx, Calyx? I'm pretty sure it's Calyx. Um, but that one is even more green and creamier than this. This is a drier, sort of soft like this is a drier green and to me this is like um yeah that's all I wrote soft green floral perfect for spring okay so yeah but I get a sweet floral in there too so let's see okay so oh this is Burberry my Burberry which I had been contemplating buying this and this is one that I think I might because it's actually quite nice. Sweet Pea, Lemon Blossom, Freesia, Peony, Peach Blossom, Damask Rose, Musk, and Moss. So it must be the Moss where I'm getting the green from. Um, but it's really nice. Oh, and this is the Eau de Toilette, by the way. So then let's see what she said here. And she said, this is the perfume with the hand-painted bottle to which you discovered the origin. So a little bit of backstory to that, she recently posted a video where she has um, this really beautiful bottle that was painted and she couldn't figure out um, why her bottle was painted because not all of the bottles that she's found are painted, she couldn't find one like it. And um, I let her know that department stores sometimes hire people to come in and paint bottles as a promotion to get people to come and buy um, more fragrances but anyway um she discounted the house but heard this was a sweet pea dominant with a garden in the rain or mossy feel which that is true and then um that's why she bought it so yeah maison francis kirktigen however you say i can't say anything i am so sorry like <laughs> uncultured swine over here um is the nose and now she wants the black version too um, yeah, and so she ordered a couple more because, um, she really got into this one. And I actually really like Burberry Touch. And then the fragrance that I wore through college was just regular Burberry London, which actually isn't really much of something that I would wear now, but it has so many memories attached to it. I still keep a bottle around. Oh God, I should not have done two sprays of this. I'm very sorry. Um, but I wrote down, starts off smelling like a cherry cordial. The chocolate and cherry are pretty heavy, but dries down to a soft tobacco smell. It smells like pipe tobacco. So that's what I wrote, that's what I got from it. The chocolate and cherry scent though, when you first spray it is whew, like, this is a strong one. I'm guessing that this is probably a more masculine scent, I would say, and I'm guessing that it is also um, probably more expensive. Um, but also, it's not for me. I think it's interesting, but not for me. Um, but let's see what it is. So it's Alchemia Misdeeds After Midnight. Uh, okay, so it's unisex, and so this is a coffee liqueur white rum 
and splash of creme de bergamot, black forest raspberries dipped in salted caramel, Arabian rose water infused with vetiver root tumbling wantonly together into a seductive bed of vanilla musk and golden amber. Again, I guessed like zero of it. Um, yeah, I get more, I can see how they say coffee now, but like I literally, I get more chocolate than coffee. But I guess since it's liqueur, that makes sense. Mm. Yeah, she's, she's a bit much. And by me guessing that it was expensive, let's see. I can literally find this like, oh, actually it's super inexpensive, 18 bucks. So the quality of that perfume is really good. I would buy from that house, just not that fragrance. She said, you said this thing was chocolatey, which I don't get because I am too busy huffing in the true coffee and booze. I have been so disappointed over the last few years hearing about certain coffee scents and then smelling them and they hardly smell of anything. And then she said, F you black opium. I loved your mother. What happened to you? Um, <laughs> let alone coffee. This one though, now my favorite coffee scent. Also, I adore the name and the house that makes it. So underrated and perfume is $45 and powerful. You were right about the berryness. Yeah, but like wrong about everything else. Yeah, because I was texting her. I'm like, I definitely get berries. And, but for me, I guess I was wrong and everything else. And everything on my skin though, because I wore these on my skin and didn't spray them on a strip also. Everything on my skin turns creamy or powdery. That's usually why I prefer drier scents, by the way. And here's the other thing that I'm picking up is I smell cherry a lot when things are not cherry, um, which I'm already opening this envelope. I need to not because I need to spray it first and talk about it first. So because um, I wrote down for this one, powder, almond, cherry, boozy. And I just thought maybe she had an affinity <laughs> for powdery since, but I think, oh my God, I literally sprayed that directly into my water bottle. Okay. This one for sure is almond and cherry, right? It has to be because this is more cherry in it than say the other one I can get coffee from, but this is like, this is cherry, cherry. Um, and if it doesn't have cherry in it, I quit. Okay, so this is another one by Alchemia Perfumes, um, and it has Earl Grey tea, black raspberry creams, rose water, saffron syrup, cinnamon honey, white amber, and vanilla incense. So... If it doesn't have cherry in it, I quit. And by the way, this is called Honored Ghosts. Okay. <laughs> like, those scents, I don't know. I don't... The funny thing is, when I was texting her and telling her what I smelled and things, like she was just like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that tastes like perfume. All right, so here's what Amy had to say about number nine. Another from the house that made number eight. I love tea scents and this one fools around with gourmand and oriental notes plus incense. Yes, please. I think it smells like nothing else on the market. You will love this house's marketing slash illustrations and their green and unisex scents, I bet. Okay. <laughs> so when I first sprayed it, I hated it. And I wrote, it smelled like powder mixed with old fashioned hard candies that have been long forgotten in a thrift store purse. But then the dry down is an intoxicating incense smell. And this one I actually want to buy. It smells like walking into a hippie store in Yellow Springs. So if you can get past that first spray, this one is so good. So this was actually my favorite out of everything that she sent. Let me open up and see the notes and see. Um, I don't think um, hard candies in a thrift store purse because I didn't really write anything down because I just pretty much wrote hippie shop in Yellow Springs, but it's very incense-y. Um, so let's see the notes. So this is Solstice Kaifi is what this one is called. Um, 
It's unisex. And it's a frankincense resin, forward blend wrapped in plump raisins, sticky golden honey, warm beeswax, red wine, rich resinous labdanum, dusty myrrh, dusty myrrh, sorry, light traces of spicy. Yeah, it just keeps going on here, but it also says, like mentioned pine resin, things like that. So, um, I really liked this one. So this was my favorite and although she said you called this weird and then you said you really liked it it's my favorite of all that I sent you which is weird because we have completely different tastes and this is my favorite out of everything she sent me she said totally me in a bottle in my top in my top five if not my number one in the winter deeply resinous and incensey oriental but then throw in a few things from the traditional Asian altar like fruit plus other offerings also raisins and honey. I'm crazy about the latter two things, but I don't think you are. So I'm not sure where you fall will fall with this. As you mentioned, it lasts 10 plus hours, maybe days on clothes. Welcome to Solstice, Solstice Sense, my favorite house. All right, so on to number 11. Um, this one, Smells, again, very similar to something that I sent her. Yeah, and I wrote orchid, amber, vanilla, creamy, not something I would choose. It has a waxy lipstick quality in the dry down. It has a deeper boozy quality with the orchid. Reminds me of, I put Tom Ford Black Orchid on or the Beauty Pie perfume. So I sent her a Beauty Pie perfume called Love um, that has that black orchid smell in it. For whatever reason on this strip that I just sprayed, it doesn't smell as headache inducing as it did on my body. On my body, I wanted to like scrub this off. Um, it was rough. So let's go ahead and see what it is. So it, this is Pascal Morabito or Boreal. I don't know. Okay. Um, so it's got bergamot, jasmine, freesia, tonka bean, vanilla, heliotrope, sandalwood, patchouli, and musk. So I think it's the jasma, jasmine for me. Um, don't like it. I think it, yeah. So I said orchid, but I think the orchid... Orchids kind of do where you're though. I'm pretty, yeah, it's the jasmine that I just, I can't get behind. So she said another cheapy and God only knows why because it was designed by the superstar Natalie Lorson and, and I think of incredible quality. Like you could call it a Dior or a Lutens and it would sell for 200. Very oriental, no anise or licorice, but I get that feeling from it. Maybe the Helio trip combined with other things. I think you said you got a cherry feel from this one and I bet it is also the heliotrope cherry pie plant. Um, the house is pretty undiscovered in the US and sometimes you can find these scents at TJ Maxx or online for $20. They are hit or miss depending on the nose. So I might have at one point said cherry on this one, but I think that was another one that I was smelling all the cherry in. Yeah, I don't get cherry in this one. Okay, so I said upon first spray it smelled masculine or cologne-like. And I got oak moss from it. And 15 minutes of wear, it softened up and became powdery slash soft and feminine. Definitely unisex in my opinion. So, again, though almost everything goes powdery on me. Um, let me see what it is first. I Okay, this is Boucheron Boucheron. Again, it's an oriental floral fragrance for women. She really likes those orientals, doesn't she? <laughs> so it says, um, top notes are, is it Tajits? I, I'm probably pronouncing that wrong. I have no idea what it is. Uh, tangerine, apricot, bitter orange. Uh, tuberose, Madagascar. Am I getting, oh my gosh, this is one of those that has like everything in it. Um, all the way down and it's got oak moss. 
at least I smell the oak moss correctly. Okay, so let's see what she has to say about this one. This is a traditional lighter oriental, no young folks care about anymore. I think very sexy. I love it because I can smell the marigold and Indian spices. I imagine an Indian wedding smelling like this, but I have no proof. Here's what's funny. So all of her descriptions in her um, email that she has sent me are these lovely stories about it. And I literally, um, the things I sent her, like the description card where I kind of describe them like, oh, well, this is a description for the scent. Um, one was like, I threw up in somebody's backyard or <laughs> fast food workers love the way I smell when I wear this. Like, um, that's kind of the difference of quality that you're getting between her channel and mine, just in case you're wondering. All right, so let's move on to number 13. This one is a very licorice anise scent. scent. And I missed the thing half the time. Look, but I did spray my office remote. So, um... <laughs> let me if I can get it oh my gosh this one is like just a quick stream I just sprayed my door over there um okay there we go this one just shot out of here okay yeah I have um I wrote down upon first spray it was a sweet powdery scent and then the powder and I put like powdered sugar and I put that it smells like Necco wafers and I don't know if any of you were older <laughs> um, or if you've just been to an old timey candy store because Necco wafers are still a thing. But they're a candy that's been around like since like Civil War times. Um, and this smells like Necco wafers to me and each wafer had a different flavor. So there would be like winter green and then like the next one would be like anise or like licorice and then there would be a chocolate one in there and then you know so on and so forth and they all had a powdered sugar coating on them and there would be clove I believe was one of them and I'm, I think I'm picking up clove in this so that's kind of what this reminds me of so let me open this card and show you all how I'm completely wrong about everything that I smelled so this is aqua de parma mandor mandorlo de Sicilia which I yeah, this is not the Aqua de Parma I own. So it's again, it's an oriental floral fragrance. Um, and it's unisex. Top notes are green almond, star anise, which thank goodness I got a note right here. Um, white peach, ling ling, jasmine, bourbon, vanilla, um, tolu, balsam, white musk and cedar. So, so let's see what she has to say about this. Um, she said, you said chocolate and some people get that, though not a note, but I get sparkling pistachio cream soda. This is a gourmand for summer. I freaking love pistachio. Also some wood and citrus. I'm crazy about the beautiful bottle in Coffret 2. Again, I don't say things right. So last scent here is number 14 and so let's go ahead and give it a spray here we go okay I really liked this one and I just lost another cap okay this is a very green scent like fresh grass or spring leaves maybe even some pine needles it's like if you were to tear a leaf and um, like in the spring, like on a tree or something like that, this would be it. Um, that's what I get from it. So let's open it up and see what it is. So this is Diptyque Phyllocecos. Phylo I don't know how to pronounce any of that stuff. Okay. So it's a woody aromatic fragrance for women and men. It was launched in 1996. The nose behind this fragrance is Olivia. Gia Cobetti. Top notes are fig leaf, fig, green notes, coconut, fig tree, woody note cedar. I don't get the fig at all. 
I get the green notes the ch and the woody notes. I don't get any coconut either. Maybe a little bit. Um, but it's a very, very green scent. I really like this one. Um, and then let's see what she had to say about it. This is one I thought you might own and if not, buy. My favorite fig fragrance. Supposed to smell like the experience of sitting under a fig tree in a warm summer day. I get the stem, leaves, and flesh. The hint of coconut makes it soft instead of screechy. Um, sometimes happens with fig. Classic house, incredible nose. So yes. So that is everything that she sent me. So she did um, kind of tally up the fragrances that she really enjoyed. So I am going to be right back tallying up kind of like the same sort of um, schematic that she had, telling you which ones I really enjoyed and which ones I really did not enjoy. And I'll be right back. All right, so I've done the tally and I'll have here on the screen her tally, it's on the pink paper versus my tally. Um, just showing you the ones that I love and the ones I don't love. She came up with the whole schematic and I thought it was a really great idea. So pretty much what I gathered from this entire experiment that we did was that um, even though we have completely different tastes, there is still some crossover there. And it was super fun to take the marketing aspect completely out of um, testing scents. So a lot of the time I am a sucker for marketing. If I see something and I was like, oh, like that's a really great story. I am more likely to want to buy that perfume and maybe even I would be more inclined to wear the perfume and enjoy the perfume if in my head there's a really fun story behind it. Because some of these houses that she sent me here um, I think I would have definitely fallen victim to it and for sure I did with the Clinique Black because I own it and also I think it's kind of funny because I feel like she knows that I own that and she did that to trick me because honestly I threw something in there to kind of trick her or mess with her as well so I think that's really funny all right so here's my takeaway from doing this little experiment with Amy first I am shocked that she did not send me any Guerlain because that's her thing. Also, um, I knew that Oriental fragrances were kind of her thing and they're kind of not my thing. So I knew that going into this, I probably would not like very much that she sent. However, I liked way more than I thought I would. Also for reference, I tried to put stuff in hers that I thought she would like. So if you notice that I might like a little bit less than what she likes, that is probably because I tailored hers to her a little bit. Um, it's kind of wild that her favorite fragrance that she sent me is also my favorite fragrance that she sent me, even though we have completely different tastes and fragrances. She really likes those oriental, creamy, soft, powdery sorts of scents. And I'm one of those people who really like masculine leaning woody scents. Um, and so, and I actually really like Oud and that's something that she doesn't like. So I did try to challenge her a little bit there and I threw in a couple of things that I knew um, would challenge her because I knew there were a couple of things that um, she doesn't like, um, such as anything that smells overly fresh or anything that um, contains oud. And this entire experiment has also kind of taught me while I was like spraying stuff and figuring out what I like and what I don't like, it has also taught me that um, I don't really need to keep around stuff that I don't like. So while I was doing this experiment and chatting with Amy, I was like, you know what? I need to start decluttering some stuff. So I went through and I had four shelves of perfume here in my office and I've now decluttered it down to two shelves, which the bottom shelf is still stuff that I'm kind of like trying to figure out whether or not I want to keep. But um, my whole goal is to just have perfumes that I absolutely love around. And I love the whole idea of like sort of doing like these blind smell tests and things like that without knowing what the perfume is because I feel like that really helped me make my decision up really quickly. But overall, this was an absolute blast and I really enjoyed chatting with her 
every day about what I was currently smelling and she was so super nice about it because I would tell her that I was smelling something and she'd be like mm hmm and um, I was wrong almost every single time. I'm surprised that she even knew what I was talking about. I was kind of a dummy and I completely forgot to write down the list to keep for myself to where when she was referencing a number um, in our text, I kind of had to just guess. But for the most part, she was able to pick out a lot of what was in those things and describe them well enough to where I knew exactly what she was talking about. I'm pretty sure had she not wrote down the numbers that I was trying that she would have no idea what I was talking about because I smelled cherry in like five fragrances that did not have any cherry in them. So if you're interested in doing this challenge, please go ahead and do it and use the hashtag that we've used below and I'll also have it here on the screen. That way we can find it and we can watch your videos as well because we would love to see it. Go ahead and check out Amy's channel as well. Um, she puts up videos regularly and they are awesome. She is a wealth of knowledge. Please subscribe if you feel compelled to do so. Mostly here on my channel I do talk about um, beauty and perfume, but I also um, talk about like exercise and clothes and outdoor things as well. I'm a little bit all over the place, but um, again, it's from the perspective of the average consumer and not somebody who's trying to sell you something. So if that's something that you're interested in, please subscribe. So anyway, thank you so much for watching this video. If I have missed anything, um, please look in the description box or in the comment section below. Um, and I will talk to you all very soon. Thank you for watching. Bye.